to stick in the north end zone. We can only be in one place, and that's Raymond James Stadium in Tampa. Today, it's a Week 14 matchup that should be a good one between the New Orleans Saints and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Hi again, everyone. Brandon Gordon alongside Charles Davis. And, Charles, you take a look at this Buccaneer ball club. And they've lost three straight here, and it goes without saying, I guess, they could certainly use a win. And how do they get a win? Because they've lost three straight, I think it's paramount that they get a fast, clean start to this game. Meanwhile, for the visiting Saints, they come in feeling good after back-to-back -back victories. Three quarters of the NFL season are complete. What lurks in our final month? We're underway in week 14. This one taken from the seventh. No, oh, a nifty juke there. Not much fun for a guy trying to tackle it. So out come the Bucs now for their first drive. They're led out by the number one overall pick of these Bucs in the 2015 draft. Out of Florida State, the former Noel, Jameis Winston. And he's always been a gym rat. He's always been a guy who just absolutely loves the game and loves everything about preparation. Watching tape, rallying teammates. He has a charisma that's just off the charts. How does he get better, though? Starting in year two, well, he worked out in the offseason, lost weight, reconfigured his body. I think it's just a matter of continuing to take care of the football and continuing to lead his team. Because you know in Tampa Bay, they hashtag believe in Jameis. They tried to run the counter, just that the defense wasn't fooled. And when they're not fooled, you see the end result. Because what you're doing there, you mentioned the counter. You're using your offensive linemen sometimes to pull or move, to influence the defensive front, to go in that direction and create the space back in the other side and block it appropriately. But you're exactly right. Didn't move him, except they're waiting for him and made the play. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. We heard them talk before the game about utilizing the intermediate passing game this week. It works for them there. They move the chains. And we saw them work on it in practice as well. And most teams take a period at a time to work on different things. They put a couple of periods of work into the intermediate passing game. And now we know exactly why. They got the look that they were seeking, and they were able to take advantage of it. And he's going to be stopped up at about the 47-yard line. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. Here's the offense, and highlighted as a guy who gave himself his own nickname, the Dugginator. Brandon, you really can't nickname yourself, but if he keeps running at this level, They'll have plenty of good nicknames to choose from. Four down, four down. Easy, easy, easy. Sink your creep. On second down, Martin. And they will stop him after a fairly minimal pickup. Give him three on the run there. Now they're looking at a third and about five. So following the run, we'll see what they do here on third down. Now Winston, surveying the field, going right side here, and that's complete. A big play there on the catch and run, and it'll give him a fresh set of downs. Would it be safe to say that as precise as routes are supposed to be run in the NFL, maybe they're not quite as precise in college ball? That's accurate, yeah. And I think we saw a college route in the NFL there. Just find the soft spot, find the dead zone, and find the first down. And that's what he just did. And he's got it. Caught in the end zone. Touchdown, Tampa Bay. Adam Humphreys, his first touchdown on the year. And the Bucs have taken a first quarter lead. Not a bad way to start it. And I think that that was part of their script because so many teams script their opening possessions. And, and whether it's just that possession or even deeper into the half, sometimes it's 15 to 30 plays. That had to be one in there where they call a shot play. Go for the big one, and they got it done. That time, a six-play drive. And it's all finished off with a touchdown by Tampa Bay. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. This will be taken to the back of the end zone. And he'll take it back to about the 19-yard line. And here come the Saints for their opening drive. They'll be led out by their quarterback in his 16th season now. 11th is a New Orleans Saint, Drew Brees. And he has to hold just about every Saints passing. A play 
plays like this when the ball comes free, it's often unusual for the team that lost it to get it back because this is, this is a quarterback. The ball gets away from him. Everyone else is trying to execute what they're supposed to do on offense. They're usually looking in the other direction, downfield, or have moved away from it. In this case, though, a teammate is able to come up with the ball. This is caught. It's Cooks. It goes as a gain of eight, and it moves the chains. A little football 101 there. You just see the receiver try to run down the defender, meaning he goes right at him, and really trying to move him a little bit towards the center of the field so he can put his foot in the ground and break to the out to the sideline and make a catch. And he'll get this one down to about the 27. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. The headshots here are the offensive unit. And what about Brandon Cooks? If he's not a 1,000-yard receiver every year he's healthy in the league, I'll be surprised. Came out of college wanting to be a pro, studied all the best receivers in the NFL before he even got to the league. Breeze now. He's got his man. It's Brandon Coleman. And down inside the 15 he goes. They give him 13 yards there on the play and a fresh set of downs. And the defense with their backs against the wall a little bit here as the offense is in the red zone. Into the red zone, it's Breeze. That's going to be caught at the 10-yard line. That throw good for four. It's second down. Now Breeze throwing on second down. That's complete right around the eight. Call it a gain of five. And they'll be faced with a third and inches. Well, the strategy was evident there. Get it to your tight end and make it a one-on-one -on -one play with a cornerback. Who's usually going to win that one? The tight end, but not there. Not in this situation. How about the corner defeating that logic and making a really nice tackle? And the offense readies for play number 10 of this series. And the box with an extra defender in the secondary now on third down. To throw, it's Breeze. He was trying to get it to C.J. Spiller, and it's fourth down. After all the preparation, all the practice, a play like that will absolutely break your heart. They had everything they wanted, just unable to complete it. In the end zone, a big-time drop. The offense here not budging. They're going to fight for it on fourth and inches. They'll run for it. It's England. They'll get neither the touchdown nor the first down. And it'll be a turnover on downs. And a look now at the game so far for Jameis Winston. He's had one of those games that any quarterback loves, not only being able to... So the defensive front holding strong there on fourth and inches. And how about the battle of big people up front? That turned into a leverage game, didn't it? Defensive linemen, they won it. Lower than the offensive guys, pushed them back, knifed through, and made a great play. They start the drive with Martin. Oh, it'll 360. Oh, <laughs> Just what you want on a first down run. Call it eight yards, and it's second and two. And that run there does nothing but juice up the guys who are moving the football. I mean, if you're an offensive lineman, people running it, actually the guy calling plays, you're almost jumping up and down in jubilation, aren't you? Yeah, now you've got options on second down. And big-time options. You might want to think about play action and try and get something cheap right here over the top. Not too many more ideal situations at second and two in order to try and pick up a first down. They ran it and picked it up. Ready. First down, here's the run with Martin. And he finds enough of an opening to get this one back up to his 20. It's a six-yard gain on the ground, and that'll make it second and four. Some runs are blocked so well, you almost forget that someone has to carry the ball to gain the yardage. The leverage by the offensive line to create space up front, really well done. Winston with a give to Martin. Sometimes they work against a smaller defensive back. But when they find it, they go to it, and it often results in touchdowns. Aguayo on for the PAT. And it's good to make it 14 0. 
So that one a pretty time-consuming 10-play drive. And it ends with a touchdown for the Bucs. On the return, here's Marcus Murphy. And he'll take this one near the 25, call it the 26-yard line. Out onto the field comes New Orleans. And last time, they had it fourth and goal, rolled the dice, didn't get it. Now they've got to put that behind and try to put together another drive. A simple tip of the cap, a nod of the head to the defense. Congratulations, you got us last time. But you didn't hold us the whole time. We got down to position. We were able to be in position to score. Let's go ahead and attack again. Continue to have that kind of confidence. Not worry about the one play that didn't allow them to get into the end zone. And this time they'll be trying to get it into the end zone. We'll see what they do. It's caught left side by Cooks. He goes for 18 there as the drive will continue. Everything about that play was beautiful. A great corner route where the receiver worked the defensive back inside and then broke back to the outside to the corner. But how about the throw by the quarterback? Anticipation on the break from inside to outside. He threw the football as the receiver turned around. The ball greeted him. for Ingram. Now Breeze. Trying to get it to Thomas and it's intercepted. Picked off by Quan Alexander. And they are going to set up shop at the 40-yard line. Oh, timing is everything on a route like this. He tried to drive that football into a tight spot. And if you're a little early or a little late, chances are there's going to be someone there. And sure enough, this one's going the other way. And Tampa Bay trots out there now. And that last drive, a long drive, but not just that. They had a great air attack going. Did they stick with that? I would think that they would because if they were confident enough to do it on the last drive, starting backed up in their own territory, why would you change anything? They've got to be confident about what they're presenting and continue to do so. Yeah, because the secondary, they really look clueless. And that was amazing because that drive went and went. No adjustments and no big plays by the defense to knock the ball away. And he's able to get this one down to the 40-yard line. Give him 11 yards that time and a new set of downs. Now, that's the Doug Martin we saw, not just in his rookie year when he burst on the scene out of Boise State, but how about in 2015 when he earned a big-time contract extension from Tampa Bay? Yeah, you mentioned it from Boise State, 31st pick back in 2012. And off comes to Martin. And he'll take it down to the 30-yard line. It'll be a pickup of 10 yards. And it'll be second and very short. Not an ideal spot to be on first down, but I love that the play caller did not immediately abandon the running game and say, okay, we've got to throw it in order to pick it up. Stayed with the run, was rewarded with a big-time pickup. Now they're in second and manageable. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he's going to be taken down right at the line. Only a gain of a yard there, but it indeed gets him a new set of downs. Second and inches is oftentimes an invitation for an offense coordinator to take a big shot downfield because he feels like he can come back on third down and pick up the first down. But sometimes you just don't want to break tendency. Stay with what you are, stay with who you know, and go get the first down. That's exactly what they did. It's a six-yard pickup, but it gets him to second and four. And after the play on the ground, that brings up second down here. Frustrating for a defense, energizing for an offense. Finding a way to create that type of yardage in your running game, that'll make the guys carrying the ball very, very happy. Now Martin, and he's going to lose yards. They take him down at the 26. So he loses three yards there. Now third down. The defense won that play so fast that I think if the running back even had time to notice if anyone was there, it was just a blink of an eye, and there was a loss on the play. He's got time. He's going to find his running back. It's complete. Give him two yards on that play. The coach would always say, you better treat this one just like you're playing offense or defense. It's a big part of the game. And we just saw evidence of why right there with that fumble. Yeah, fumble on the punt, and after it was turning up to be a pretty decent return. Yeah, a really nice return. They were going to be set up okay, and the offense would feel good running onto the field. And now the defense has to try it out there and try and slow them down. Ready, move, 
Winston now from the 50. And that is incomplete here. Mike Evans, the one he was looking for. And that'll bring up second down. When you see passes knocked down by those guys that caught the frustrated fullbacks, the linebackers, you know that in their zone coverage, they were able to drop, see the ball thrown, and react to it very quickly. Throwing again, Winston on second and 10. Left side complete, Safarian Jenkins. And he gets this one all the way down inside the 20-yard line. A big play that time on the catch and run. 31 yards. And now a first down following that long gain. They'll put two receivers left, two to the right. I know I'm not in the rooting business, but I really like this kid, Austin Safarian Jenkins. Good catch there. I'm just hoping he can stay on the field and have some good health. And the Bucks hoping. And now the Saints are going to take a timeout on defense. It's just their first, so they'll have two remaining here before we get to halftime. An encroachment penalty here, maybe just a mental lapse, partner. Sometimes you have to just watch the football. Make sure it's snapped before you're jumping. Four yards remaining now on second down. Now a second down throw for Winston. Now they set up the screen. That's complete. And he's into the end zone for a Tampa Bay touchdown. A great play there. His sixth touchdown of the season. And the Bucs are going to add on to their lead. There are several elements to a well-executed screen pass. This one resulted in a touchdown. It had all of those elements. Hey, you're so right because you really need the rush to almost get to the quarterback, almost get to the passer. Then you've got to get the ball thrown perfectly, whether it's to the running back, the wide receiver, whoever the screen guy is. And, of course, the blocking has to form in front to get him downfield for the touchdown. Our eyes shift to the defense of the Buccaneers now. Yeah, they gave up a touchdown last drive. You kind of need to hit the reset button after every touchdown and give it up, Charles. I love that, and, and the way that you phrased it is perfect because from series to series, you can reset how the game is going to go. If you gave up a touchdown before, it doesn't mean you have to do it again. And if you made a great play before, you have to reset again anyway because they're going to attack. So I love the way you phrased it and put it out there. That's what they have to do in this series. Not like when you're playing a video game. You can't hit the reset button here. Let's go. No, you shouldn't anyway. That's for sure. And now it looks like they're going to be in the hurry up. Now Breeze. And that's caught. Did he stay in bounds, though? He did not. Ruled incomplete. That was a nice grab. Just couldn't get the feet down, right? You need that toe-tap sequence there. Whatever size shoe he's wearing, probably need about a half size smaller to complete that one. Breeze will try again on second down. And he's got it over the middle, Fleener. Now whistles come in. We're gonna get a timeout here by the offense. So that means they're down to one remaining here as we head toward halftime. They come out five wide, three of them to the right side. Breeze now. He'll air it out deep for Thomas. And that one falls incomplete. Looked like he might have had position there, but he couldn't hold on it at second down. And on second and ten now. And when all else fails as a defender, when you're not there in the coverage, your best friend is exactly what we saw there. A big play shot taken by the offense. Unfortunately, it ended in a big drop. That catch good for five. It's third down. Third and five, so they bring in an extra defensive back. They're expecting pass. Throwing now is Breeze. It's complete to Flaner. And he gets the first down here as he's taken down at the 24. They're going to hurry back to the line now. On first and ten, here's Breeze. And Cooks has it over the middle. And he gets it inside the 10 to the 9. Now hold everything here. We're going to get a timeout by the offense. And with